G'day traders, welcome back to another PineScript lesson. Today's lesson, I'm going to be answering a question from a student in the mastery course. Now the student, Connor, wants to know how to get the bar index of an intraday bar based on a condition that's met on a higher time frame. Now, I don't know how many of you guys out there will need to do this sort of thing in your own scripts. It's the first time I've ever had this challenge in PineScript, but I think the techniques I use to get this to work are quite interesting. So I think you guys will appreciate my thought process and the techniques I used to analyze that higher time frame on intraday bars. So in Connor's script, he's pulling the previous day's high and he wants to get the corresponding bar index for when the lower time frame bar creates this high. And that's exactly what this script here is doing. All right, so here I am with a pretty much blank script. I've just written out the steps we need to take in order to achieve our goal today. So the first thing we need to do is get the higher time frame highs value. So if I drop out to the daily chart, that is going to be this bar's high here, this green bar. That's the first step, obviously. The second step, however, is a little more complicated. Now we need to calculate how many bars we need to look back on our intraday time frame to find which bar generated this high or created this high. So to do that, we actually need to add up how many bars have printed today and how many bars printed yesterday. And then that's our loop count. So we need to loop from this bar here all the way to this bar here between these two time frames. And now that looks like the world's worst smiley face. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. So we need to add up how many bars printed today, how many bars printed yesterday. We need to start our loop, our full loop from this bar here, loop over all of these bars on our chart to find which one created yesterday's high. And now this is an even worse smiley face. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is the mind of programmers, we get a little crazy. So we calculate how many bars we need to look back and then we loop from the start of yesterday's session or the higher time frame session. If our higher time frame session is a weekly chart, then we're looping from the start of last week to today. But in this case, we're gonna stick with the daily chart for now. And what we need to do is loop from this bar to this bar, find that highest high. Once we've found that highest high, so once the bar we are looping over equals yesterday's high, we save the loop counter and exit our loop. And then this loop count is gonna be how many bars printed since that intraday bar created yesterday's high. So in this case, that's 14 bars. So if we subtract 14 from this bar's current bar index, that will give us the bar index of this bar. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, but we'll start writing some code now and I'll show you how we do this in practice because I think it's quite interesting. Like I said, many of you might not ever need to do this in your scripts, but there will be parts of the techniques I use here that will be useful to you in other use cases. So I think you'll still find this video interesting. So the first thing we're doing here is getting user input. We're just getting the higher time frame. By default, it's the one day time frame. The next thing we need to do is get our higher time frame high. Now in the past, I would usually do something like this is confirmed question mark zero otherwise one and i would use this approach for getting our higher time frame high and this would eliminate repainting however this works on most markets but in some markets it doesn't work i'll show you what i mean in a second uh, you would have seen in a lot of my previous videos that this is the method i used to use but i use a different method now and i'll explain why so first of all let's plot this onto our chart now if i save my code we should be getting yesterday's high drawing there we go it's not repainting, it's not doing anything funny. However, if I go to a stock market like Apple, you can see this here. Um, I'm not entirely sure why it does this, but on the final bar of yesterday's or last night for me, this is a US market and I'm in Australia, obviously, if you can't tell by my accent, on the very final bar of yesterday's trading session in the US, for whatever reason, this bar began a new day. And now we're drawing this bar's high. And that's incorrect. This should be yesterday's high. And then around midnight tonight, a new bar should open and that becomes the new day. Anyway, to be completely honest, I'm not sure why this happens, but I do know how to fix it. <laughs> and the way we fix it, according to the PineScript documentation is this code here. So if I copy this code and paste it above, um, I'll just shorten this up a bit. So, and I don't know why they say index, let's just call it market. We're getting two integer values, market, higher time frame and market current time frame. That's what CTF stands for, current time frame. So for market higher time frame, we're checking is the current bar a real time bar? Is it currently active? If so, we want to reference yesterday's bar to eliminate repainting. Otherwise, if it's not a real time bar, that means it's a historical bar and we can reference the current bars index. And then we do the same thing for market current time frame, except if the bar is real time, we're referencing the current bar. Otherwise we're referencing the previous bar. And now I can replace this ternary operator here with market higher time frame. 
So the security function expression is going to run on the daily chart. And so this expression will be passed into the daily charts high value. And if the current bar, the current daily bar is real time or active, then we'll be referencing yesterday's market data instead of today's market data. And that will stop the script from repainting. If I go back to Euro dollar here and I get rid of this and I save my code, this will now repaint. And what that means is throughout price action today, if we come up here, this red line will move with price action as we generate new highs. There are times when you will want that to happen, but in this particular case, we don't want repainting. We just wanna draw yesterday's high over today's price action. And then when a new day starts tomorrow, we wanna to draw today's high over tomorrow's price action. So to eliminate repainting properly, we're going to use these two values like so. And now if I go back to Apple and I save my code, this will no longer be drawing like this. We'll be drawing yesterday's high properly. There we go. So anyway, that's how we get the higher time frames high without repainting. Now that we have that value, the next thing we need to do is count how many bars, I'll go to Euro dollar again for this. We need to count how many bars have printed today and how many bars printed yesterday. Now I need to move these blue lines because I forgot that my time zone is obviously out of whack with the exchange time zone. So technically at 8 a.m. a new day starts for Forex for where I live. So this is how it should look. So we ignore the dates down here. Technically a new day started at midnight here, but as far as the Forex markets are concerned, we're basing our new days off the exchange time zone. So what I need to do now is count how many bars have printed today and how many bars printed yesterday, add them up. That gives us our look back period, but that's easier said than done. The way I do it in this particular example is borrowed from my Arvol by time indicator. And the way I go about this, is like so. I'm just gonna copy this block of code over and break it down for you guys. So the first thing we do is detect a new session on our higher time frame. So when a new higher time frame session begins, new session will be true. And the way we do that is we detect a change in the timestamp uh, of the open of this higher time frame period. So in this case, when a new daily bar begins, new session will be set to true. Then we have two counters here. We have a counter for how many bars printed this session and how many bars printed in the last session of our higher time frame. So in this case, this will be how many bars printed yesterday. This is how many printed today. So if we are not starting a new session, then we add one to our bars this session counter. And so every time a new bar begins, we add one to our counter for today. However, if new session is true, then this will not get executed, but this code will. And what this does here is it saves how many bars printed across yesterday, and then it resets our bar count for this session. And so now we have two values, how many bars have printed today since the new day began or a new higher time frame period began, and how many bars printed during yesterday's higher time frame session, in this case, yesterday. If I change this to weekly, then now we're looking at this week, how many bars printed this week and adding up how many bars printed last week to get our look back period. So hopefully, that makes sense and you're following along here. So once we have this information, the next thing to do is calculate how many bars we need to look back. So this is our look back period, bars total across our higher time frames, And that's going to be how many bars printed this session plus how many bars printed yesterday or in the last higher time frame session. Now we can loop through all of the intraday bars that are relevant to this look back period and check if the intraday condition is met in this case, if the, uh, let me change this back to daily. So we're going to loop from this bar to this bar and detect which of these bars equals our higher time frame high. And the reason we need to start looping from here to the current bar instead of from the current bar backwards is because if there are multiple bars here that equal the highest high of yesterday, then this bar will be incorrectly detected as the bar that generated the high. We want the first bar that touched that high to be uh, identified as the intraday bar that created yesterday's high. So we start with the bar counter. This is how many bars have printed since this high was created. And now we can loop, so if I paste this code in, we're creating a for loop and I, our loop index is going to be set to the total bar count for today and yesterday. So this bar here, and we're going to loop from that bar to zero. So in this case, we'll be looping from 30 bars ago to zero. And in each iteration of this loop, we're going to check if that bar's high is equal to the previous day's high. If this condition is met, then we found our candle or bar that created yesterday's high. So we assign 
our bar count sinks high to the loop index and we break out of our loop. So we stop looping because we don't need to finish our loop anymore. We've already found the bar that we're looking for. So now that we have that information, we have everything we need to calculate what the bar index is of this bar here. So if we copy this over, what we're doing here is creating a new variable called higher time frame bar index. Technically, this should be a intraday bar index of our higher time frame high, and it's going to be set to the current bar index. So this bar here will have a bar index that equals the total number of bars loaded onto our chart. And then if we subtract this number, this loop index from that bar index. So in this particular case, that'll be 15 bars. If we subtract 15 from the current bars index, that will give us this bars index. And so now if I draw all of this information onto my chart, so here we have one plot and two plot cars or plot chars, plot characters. We're plotting the previous day's high or previous higher time frame bars high. We're plotting the current bars index and we're plotting the current bar size. Now I'll show you why we're plotting the current bar size in a moment. Now notice that we're using the plot character function here instead of a plot. The reason we're doing that, as you would have seen if you watched my previous lesson on debugging scripts, these two values here are purely for debugging. So we don't need to actually have them drawing onto the chart like this red line is. But if we use a plot to draw these values, depending on your chart settings, uh, if you have this turned off, scale price chart only, then your chart scaling is gonna get warped and your chart will look something like this. Uh, it'll squish up price action and because we'll be plotting a bar index that'll be in the thousands. So our chart here will scale all the way until we see thousands on the chart. And uh, we are also plotting the bar size, which will be in pips. So that'll be a tiny number. And so we'll just end up with a really squished up chart. So to avoid that, we can use the plot character function instead. So now if I save my code, uh, we will be getting those values drawing up here. So the green number is the bar size. The blue number is the bar index that I'm hovering over and the red number is yesterday's high. So the final thing we need to do is draw this information onto the chart with a debug label so that we can verify that we're getting the correct information. So I'm gonna paste this code in here. Uh, now, don't worry, this is scary at first glance if you're new to working with labels and text and multiple lines, but I'll break it down. It's not that complicated. All we're doing here is we're checking if the current bar is the last bar on our chart. If that is the case, then this code gets executed. And what we're doing is we're calculating the bar size of the bar that generated the intraday high. So that'll be this bar here. We're subtracting this bar's low from its high, and that gives us the bar size of that bar. So this is just an example of how we can use the information we've collected up here to analyze the bar that created yesterday's high. Now, what you do with that information is obviously up to you. I didn't actually ask the student, Connor, what he wants to do with this information, but I'm sure there's plenty of good reasons why you might want to analyze the bar that generated yesterday's high. Depending on your trading system or the way you analyze charts, this could be important information. So anyway, the next thing we do is generate a label. We just create a new label on the current bar index. Um, I'm placing the label 500 points or 50 pips above the current bar's high just so that it draws up here somewhere away from price action. I don't want a big label drawing over the top of price. And then we're generating a giant string here. So the string is going to include our market type. It's going to include the intra bar count. So how many bars have drawn today or plotted today and a bunch of other information. And then we're just giving it a background color of black and a text color of white. So now if I save my code, we'll be getting a label drawing with all this information. So it's telling us our market type. It's telling us how many bars printed today. So six bars have drawn since this day began or this daily time frame session began on Euro dollar based on my exchange time zone. So in this case, we're on Oanda's price feed. So at 8 a.m. my time, a new day began on Euro dollar and we've had six bars or six hours plot since then. We're also getting how many bars printed yesterday. So we're on the hourly time frame here. We're on a Forex market and Forex markets are open 24 hours. So we should have 24 bars. So the new day began here. If I count all the way back to the previous new day's beginning, we have 24 bars. And so we're adding these two numbers together to get our look back period. So six bars today plus 24 bars yesterday gives us 30 bars and that's our blue line here. So I can verify that by counting back to the blue line. You can see we have 30 bars there. And then the last couple of uh, parameters here drawing on our label is how many bars have printed since the high was created yesterday. So if I count back to that bar there, 15 and 15. So, so far so good. Then finally we get the bar index, which is what the student wanted to get in his script. He wanted the bar index on this time frame, the hourly time frame 
of the bar that created yesterday's high. In this case, that's 25,931. If we look at this blue number up here, when I hover over that bar, you can see that it is in fact 25,931. And then finally, we're calculating the bar size of the bar that created yesterday's high. If I zoom in here, uh, it should be 22.3 pips. So if I measure from the high down to the low, close enough, 22.4 pips. So that is how we go about, well, this is one way we can go about getting the intraday bar index of a high time frame condition. Now, there are many ways we could go about doing this. It's probably simpler ways we could go about doing this. We could just have a set look back period. We could loop back like a hundred bars or so and just check which bar matches the higher time frame high here. But I know it's super rare, but what if we had several bars over the past several days that touched that high value exactly? How do we know which one generated yesterday's high? We don't know unless we loop back the correct number of bars. So that's why I went to the trouble of counting that look back period properly. And the cool thing about this method is that it's robust. So if we go to the stock market now, we're still on the one hour time frame. The difference here is that the stock market is not open 24 hours a day. And so if we wanna get the bar index of this bar here that generated yesterday's high, uh, we, we need to loop back 13 bars in this case instead of whatever it was on Euro dollar. So now it says here bars since high is nine. So if I count back nine bars from the current bar, we get nine. And the bar index up there is 21347, 21347. And now if I jump over to something like crypto, this label should also be correct still. So this is the bar that generated yesterday's high. Uh, if I count back, it should be 20 bars ago, 20 bars ago, and the bar index is 27,725. 27,725. So there you have it. We have a script that is correctly identifying which bar met our high time frame condition. Now this condition could be anything. It doesn't need to be the highest high. It could be an indicator value like an RSI, for example. It could be the bar that touched an EMA. It could be the first bar that set the high time frame overbought. The applications of this check here, you could replace this code here with almost anything. Uh, you, you get whatever high time frame value you want to analyze. And then in this for loop, you check which bar created that condition. And then you can correctly identify and isolate that bar and analyze it however you need to. So that'll do it for today's lesson. I know it was a bit of a esoteric lesson. This is the first time out of hundreds and hundreds of questions I get that anyone's ever wanted to do this. But I thought it was an interesting challenge. It took me a few hours to figure out the solution. And I think there's a lot of interesting techniques involved in this script, in this solution that can be applied to all kinds of use cases in PineScript. So I'll wrap this lesson up here. I hope you found it interesting. As always, the source code will be below. Don't forget to subscribe if you got value out of this video. I'll be back probably next week, maybe the week after. I'm a bit busy next week with some stuff, but I will try to get a video out. If I can't, it'll be next week. And in the meantime, I'll stay in touch with you with the weekly newsletter. If you're not aware of that, go to theartoftrading.com and check out our free weekly newsletter where I share information, techniques, advice, books, podcasts, things that I've found useful in my own trading and coding journey, and even business and investment techniques, mindset, psychology, all that stuff. Go and sign up to the newsletter if you want. There's no marketing there. It's just free. There is some Amazon links thrown in there from time to time, but really that's just to fund the giveaways I do sometimes when I plan to give away free books and stuff like that. With all that said, I'll speak with you soon. I love you guys. Have a great weekend and good luck with your trading.